The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com, and it's fusarium time. As soon as it's time to spray the T3 fungicide, what happens? Everybody's texting me and calling me and tweeting me, what are the best nozzles? And you know, we've done a ton of work on nozzles. There's some really excellent resources. We've done wheat schools on it. There's articles up on fieldcrotnews.com, Dave Hooker, Art Shaftsma, Albert Tenuta, tons of work. And so we know what the best nozzles are. And it tends to be the turbo flood jets, the forward back configuration, the 3070 nozzles work in there. But you gotta back up and say, well, wait a minute. If I buy the very best nozzles and I figure out, cause turbo flood jets are a pain in the butt. I gotta put a spacer in there to get them to drop down below the boom. Well, if I do that, have I solved the problem? And unfortunately, we slipped the clutch. We haven't talked enough about all the other factors. And do you know how many times I drive through the countryside and growers are spraying their T3 fungicide and they might as well be using flat fan nozzles. So we have not talked enough about droplet size. Why do turbo flood jets do a better job than forward back nozzles or then most of the others because they have a coarse droplet size. And when you look at the research, we need the coarse droplet. Why do we need a coarse droplet? Well, think about it. It's wind resistance. So we take that ping pong ball and we throw it as hard as we can into the wind. How far does it go? Now we take a hollow, bigger plastic ball of some nature, we throw that, it goes way further. So we just have to start paying more attention to droplet size. Are nozzles important? Yes. Is the correct timing important? Yes. But you can have the very best nozzles and you won't do a good job if you didn't pick, for example, a 3070 nozzle that can do an excellent job, but it has to be the right nozzle that gives you at least 20 gallons per acre and a coarse droplet. So I get asked lots about these new 3D nozzles. They're designed for fungicide. Will they do wheat? And the answer is yes, they will. But unfortunately, most of the 3D nozzles are targeted for a medium or a fine droplet. And that's like throwing the ping pong ball into the wind. And so to paint that wheat head, and it really comes down to the fact that we have to paint the back of the wheat head. It's not the front of the wheat head that we're worried about. Gosh, we can paint the front of the wheat head with anything. So it's as the sprayer goes past, going this way, it's this side. And so we gotta throw those balls, those, those coarse droplets enough that they beat the forward momentum, they beat the, the air that's slowing them down and they actually make it to that head. So droplet size. We don't think we want ultra coarse or extra coarse because then we don't have enough droplets to hit the head. We don't want fine. I mean, gosh, if you're gonna go out there and I have growers that tell me I'm gonna fog it on, baby, we're gonna up the, I gotta get good pressure. Man, you fog it on, all the droplets are going the same way. You will paint this side of the head beautifully and you will get nothing on this side of the head. That's called 50% efficacy at the very best. So coarse droplets are the target. The other thing that I get asked lots is, okay, so my, my nozzles aren't perfect. Uh, what about an anti-drift agent? Something that's gonna take those fines out. Well, okay, if you're using a 3D nozzle that's a, a fine droplet or a medium droplet, what the, the drift agent really does is it takes out all the really driftable tiny fines and it makes them into those medium droplets. Is that a good thing? Sure, because there's less drift and I've got more medium droplets. But if I need a coarse droplet to actually hit the head or a very coarse droplet to, to beat the wind and beat all those other things, I'm sorry, the drift agent isn't going to make bigger droplets than the, the nozzle is designed to make. It just can't. Couple of other things. Think about this. 
Even with a 3070 nozzle or a turbo flood jet, we're now not spraying down. We want to spray down 20 inches off the canopy. That's typically what we do. Well, as soon as I, if I'm 20 inches off the canopy, as soon as I do this, what's the distance done? So now the distance that I'm throwing it, if I'm at a 70 degree angle, it's got to go actually about twice as far to hit the target. So the only way to avoid not having a good outcome is I got to lower the boom to 10 to 12 inches off the canopy. If I'm going to be 10 to 12 inches off the canopy, I got to slow down. And immediately you all say, slow down, are you insane? I got so many acres to cover. Back to Tom Wolf. If you would only figure out how to fill faster, you can slow down and you can still get as many acres per day done. If you're going to maintain 10 inches off the canopy until we develop the technology that, that the boom does it automatically, you have to slow down. And the last thing absolutely is wind. Oh my gosh, if you're in windy conditions and we typically talk about 10 kilometer an hour wind, but if you think about throwing that, that coarse droplet, if you're throwing it into a gale force wind, the wind's going to win. It's just absolutely going to win. So, right nozzles, 100%. But there's these other factors that you just have to focus on that we haven't. Coarse droplet size, get that boom down so it's 10 inches off the canopy, and as much as you can, spray when there isn't wind. And I know those are tall orders, but you want to do the right job, Oh my gosh, that's the only way to do the right job. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, whatever you do, do your best to grow great wheat.